Welcome to the Water Level and Control Project. My name is Gideon. I will take you through the introduction of our project. Our project implemented an amateur based system which is for process control to do practicals on control for the system. It involves the control of flow and water into the process tank from the reservoir. For the control process, it involves sensors, actuators, and the control. For the sensors, it has an ultrasonic sensor, a pressure sensor, and two limit switches. For the actuators, it implements a AC motor which acts as the pump. It's inside the reservoir tank. It has a two solenoid valves that act as the drain and one solenoid valve that acts as a flow, con flow, flow valve. It has also a diaphragm flow control valve. So for, for, the, for the drain, you can implement manual drain by using the manual hand valves. Those are also implemented on this side. For the pneumatic system, it implements a compressor to provide pneumatic control to the diaphragm valve while using the current pressure converter, which is controlled by the PID. For, for when it gets a signal from the PID, a current signal, it converts the current signal into a pneumatic pressure signal that is used to control the diaphragm control valve. My next colleague will take you through the next process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dennis. Our task here is the conventional PAD, which is right here, controller, uh, with the Siemens S712 worker. Alongside them, the HMI PTP 700 uh, some of the applications of process control PAD uh, uh, fuel refinery for refinement, uh, chemical manufacturing, uh, or pharmaceutical production. All in, in all those applications, they used to control the level of the fuels. Some of the advantages you see. PLC, the fact that they are flexible, they can be altered or modified. Or uh, one other advantage the fact that uh, it's compatible with the other peripherals, like uh, HMI, or any other peripheral. Uh, thank you very much, and I welcome the next video. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nicholas Vigunakamo. I'll take you to the next part briefly. Uh, as my colleague said, my project will say, we gave a general description of how this, uh, how this uh, system functions and all the inputs and outputs. But I'll go into detail and talk about the inputs and outputs that we are talking about and the ones that are using our system. So, starting with the first. This is our first input. It's an analog input. It's a pressure sensor. This analog input it gives a current signal to the PLC, but the PLC requires a voltage signal. So, from the analog input, we have to connect it via a load, which is 500 ohm, using the ohm, the ohm principle, V equals to I R, and from the load we can get a voltage value which goes straight to the PLC. The analog input is connected to port 64 of the PLC. Going next to our, we can go next to our output. We can talk about this analog output. This is uh, an analog output called diaphragm actuated proportional valve. It, re it opens and closes from 0 to 100 percent and uh, receives the pneumatic signal from the current to pressure converter. The current to pressure converter receives a current signal from the PLC output signal board and it is specifically connected to port 80 of the PLC output output signal analog output signal board then I'll talk about the next which are the digital outputs for our digital outputs we have five digital outputs the first is the pump this is the connection but we can actually see the pump the location of the pump in the reservoir tank it's a single phase single phase ac pump 
And uh, this switch activates a contactor which closes the loop of the single phase, activating the pump. It is connected to input zero of the PLC. The next three uh, digital outputs are the solenoid valves. The first two solenoid valves are for draining, which can be seen here. Two and four and the next solenoid valve is for inlet flow the last but not the least output digital output is a bulb we had an option of using an alarm but we decided because of the noise and the disturbance we use a bulb so after we are done with the plc part now we are we have design a control panel and a monitoring panel for that matter which is the ktp 700 basic pn hmi which can be seen from here we have interfaced the hmi with the plc s7 1200 for ease of use for this part i'll take you through the code we are finished with the hardware both the, the plc part and the hmi part now i'll take you the code so that you can see our logic from the code you can see that the first network is just for starting the pid this is a memory bit which can be accessed from the hmi that is the first network uh, for the second network you can see that you are just starting the motor which is also a memory bit which activates the motor for the third network, we are trying to display the water level by taking the input from the pressure sensor and normalizing it from integer to a real value, then scaling it between these low limits and upper limits so that you can get the actual, the actual level when we see from our system, which is from 0 to 25 centimeters. <clears throat> For the fourth network, just rounding off and converting to eliminate the decimal places. <clears throat> then uh, I added a safety precaution whereby if the set point is passed by plus two centimeters or plus one centimeter, it activates the drain valve uh, for draining. Then uh, the seven one, the just precautions for if the, the process value precedes the set point then this is our main network which you can see from here from the network there's the set point and the water level equivalent all this can be seen and altered from the HMI and our output is the spring flow valve, the diaphragm valve so without wasting any more time I'll go ahead and demonstrate how our system works by starting by starting the CPU, the PLC. After starting the, the PLC from my laptop, then connecting the PLC with the schematic HMI through the Ethernet cable, I'll just go straight ahead to demonstrate how our project works. Uh, as you can see, the first, the first screen or the, the home page, you can see there is manual control and automatic control. Uh, as I've said earlier, uh, the manual control, to understand how automatic control, you must first understand how manual control works. But for this time duration, for this uh, demonstration, I won't show you how the manual control works. I'll provide information to the documentation, but you can just have a look on the layout of the manual control, just like this. Then I'll just go straight to the automatic control. You can have an on-off control an open loop control or a closed loop control but for a project we chose the closed loop control implementing PID principle then uh, we'll start the process by inputting the set point which in our case we can choose any random value between 0 and 25 I'll choose 8 inputting the set point the system senses that the PV is below the set point and it aut automatically starts the pump then you can also start the PID process now from this layout you can see that the water level can be seen from here the input output text box which also corresponds to the water level in the process tank 
the input is just set here this is for output uh, this is for output function only this is an input output function you can see the the, the pump is on the pid is on the indicator on the pid on the uh, on this screen the indicator for the pump is green meaning that the pump is on and for the drain is red meaning that the system is not draining then uh, our system is at six the water level is at six as we approach the input set point when we go to the trend monitoring you can see that the water the set point is the black trend is at eight and the blue trend which is the input or the water level is approaching it is approaching the the set point and the output it is at zero for the moment because we, invert, uh, we inverted the control logic then uh, you can see if you go back one layer you can see that our set point was eight and the system is at eight you can also see that the system is approaching eight we can uh, it's like 7.6 or something we can uh, say that this is a steady state error but uh, more or less it is at the set point which is eight then i can change the set point from eight to 12 or to 11. the system realizes that the set point has been raised to 11 and it raises the water level from 8 to 11 as it tries to maintain the water level at the new set point you can go ahead and look at the trend from the trend you can see the the, the black trend which is the set point has been shifted from 8 to 11 and the blue trend which is the water level is trying to catch up with the with the black trend which is the set point then going back to our system you can see that our system is at 11 uh water level is at 11 and set point is at 11 you can see, see here it is at 10 point something which is still the same steady state error which i was talking about so uh, the safety precautions that are included are for just in case the water level precedes the set point by two centimeters or one centimeter there's a safety precaution that we included so that it closes it it shuts down the pump and uh, opens the drain valve as it will be demonstrated right now as we you remember that uh, the set point is still at 11 we're trying to see the behavior of the system as you can see now the sound which was emitting from the motor is off and the drain indicator is green indicating that the system has detected that the water level has surpassed the set point by the, the predetermined set point and it is trying to reduce the water level to the original set point which it has successfully achieved and the motor has just come on right now since the set point has been achieved which can also be seen from the process tank which is 10 uh, so that is basically the demonstration that I wanted to show you the water level control and monitoring from the HMI. Yes, this video was taken in the absence of one member who was active through the project. His name was Simon. He was not able to be with us today. Thank you.